The Lord be with you. And also with you. A warm welcome to you this morning. Uh, the order of service is printed for you. Uh, this morning uh, or after church, we have rally day. And so please uh, plan to stay. And there's fun food and fellowship for everyone. And uh, there's lunch and ice cream and a bounce house. Uh, the youth group will meet tonight from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, and the ECC has chapel every Thursday morning at 8.30 a.m., so uh, you're free to join us for worship if you'd like to. And is Donna Bloomer here this morning? Uh, Donna was going to make an announcement about uh, Lutherans for Life. Uh, I think it's uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran. They're trying to raise money for a... Um, an ultrasound for a pregnancy center. So if you're interested, I think there's a basket in the back that you can uh, contribute to. Uh, let's begin with our opening hymn, 648, Glorious Things of You Are Spoken. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Lord, 
Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We speak the introit together. Splendor, Splendor and majesty are before him. We will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Splendor and majesty are before him. We will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, you have called us to enter your kingdom through the narrow door. Guide us by your word and spirit, and lead us now and always into the feast of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the scripture readings. Our Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 66. For I know their works and their thoughts, 
And the time is coming to gather all the nations and tongues, and they shall come and shall see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and from them I will send survivors to the nations, to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud, who draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the coastlands afar off, that I have not heard my fame or seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations, and they shall bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. And some of them also I will take for priests and for Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth that I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your offspring and your name remain. From new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from Hebrews chapter 12. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be wary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is from, for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son here, there, whom the Father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that it may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping heads and strengthen your weak knees, and make straight the paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for the holiness without no, which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words make the hearers beg that no further message be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beach touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house is written and shuts the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves cast out, and people will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at the table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for him 672, Jerusalem the Golden. And on stanza four, we will rise. Sweet. 
time, blessed country, that faithful Lord expect. In mercy, Jesus, bring us to that eternal rest. With In the name of Jesus, amen. Please be seated. The sermon text for this morning for our rally day comes from 2 Timothy 3, verses 14 to 17. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. This ends the reading. So do you remember learning your ABCs way back when you were in school? Or maybe you don't remember learning the letters of the alphabet Maybe instead you remember learning how to write cursive. Do they even teach cursive anymore in school? As parents or grandparents or as a family member or a teacher, you may remember teaching a child the ABCs or maybe you remember those little wooden blocks that have the letters painted on the side. Most of us know the ABC song and a part of almost every classroom where young children are taught is the alphabet. Even in the ancient world, children who had the privilege of going to school had little tiny chalkboards where they learned how to write the alphabet in Greek, Hebrew, Latin, or whatever language they were learning. Now you might be wondering why are we talking about the ABCs, about the alphabet this morning? Today is rally day for Sunday school, and usually we think of Sunday school as being for the children. And Sunday school doesn't teach the kids the alphabet, really. And the adult Bible class, uh, well, we assume that everyone can read, especially since your pastor prefers that you read and he doesn't. So this brings us to the text from 2 Timothy chapter 3 which is also the school theme for the ECC and for Rally Day. In the reading for today, St. Paul is writing a letter to Timothy. Paul is approaching the end of his life. He realizes that soon all of his, his appeals will be ended and he probably will die in Rome. Paul begins his letter by recalling Timothy's faith which was taught to him by his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. And at the beginning of chapter 3, Paul tells Timothy that he is living in the last days. Now just think about that. Paul wrote this almost 2,000 years ago, and he's telling Timothy that he lives in the last days. How much more so for us? How much more are we living in the very last days of this earth? if Timothy already was 2,000 years ago. Paul tells Timothy that people will oppose the truth. And if we look around our society, and we don't even really have to give any examples, we certainly see plenty of people who are opposed to the truth. Now we get to the section on which the sermon is based. Paul tells Timothy how he is to live and survive during these last days. And his word to Timothy also applies to us. Paul wants to take Timothy back to the basics. He tells Timothy, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed from childhood. Paul says to Timothy that Timothy has been acquainted with the sacred writings, 
That is the sacred ABCs or the sacred alphabet, all depending how you want to translate those words. Paul is calling Timothy, who in his own right is a pastor of a congregation and an evangelist, to remember the basics. Remember the sacred ABCs, the sacred ABCs, the sacred alphabet, the sacred writings are able to make you wise to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So how does a person live during these last days? Or maybe better to say, how do you survive in these last days when so many things oppose the truth of God? A person lives and survives during these last days by recalling the sacred ABCs. Timothy was to endure many difficult days by remembering what he learned in his childhood from his grandmother and his mother. Notice that it wasn't Timothy's seminary education under the training of the apostles that prepared him for the last days. Yeah, maybe that prepared him to work with a congregation or how to deal with certain other things. But it was what he learned in his childhood. It was the sacred ABCs that taught him how to live during the last days. So what makes these ABCs sacred or different from anything else that we encounter in preschool or kindergarten or during our education? Or what makes it different from some other writing? The reading for today tells us that all scripture is breathed out by God. The Greek word here is theopentustus, which literally means God breathed. Now we kind of know both of these words from English. Theo means God. This is where we get the word theology and the name Theodore. And theology literally means to study about God. Penustus sounds like pneumatic or pneumonia. It's related to breathing or to breath. The sacred or the holy ABCs are God-breathed. They are breathed out by God. Every other alphabet, every other writing comes out of the mouth and the mind of a person. What we encounter in the Bible is breathed out by God. The breath of God gives us life. In Genesis 2, verse 7, we read, Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. God breathed life into the first human being. No other created creature had life breathed into them directly by God. God's breath also gives us life not only life to our physical body, but also spiritual life through his sacred ABCs. In other words, you can say it is God's breath that keeps us and preserves us during these very last days. So when the events of these last days cause you distress, or when the evil of this world overwhelms you, or when someone is proud, arrogant, abusive, ungrateful, heartless, slanderous towards you, God's breath, given through his sacred ABCs, given by his word, will keep and preserve you. Maybe you've had a moment in your life when your breath was taken away. I think a lot of us have had those moments. Maybe when you heard some horrible news and you just felt like you couldn't breathe after it, the death of a loved one, a great evil or terror in this world. Maybe you heard bad news about yourself, a health scare. Maybe you're getting laid off or you lost your job. There are those things that just knock the air out of your lungs. And in those moments, God breathes life into us once again through his word. Some of you may have had CPR training. Now CPR wasn't officially invented until 1960 and it saved many, many lives. 
Yet already at the middle of the 18th century, around 1740, the doctors in Paris were recommending mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation for people who were drowning. When we hear and read God's word, God breathes into us. God gives us mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to keep us alive during these evil and last days of the world. And finally, when our bodies come to a stop here on earth, when we lose our breath for the very last time, know that the Lord God will breathe life into you once again when he returns in his glory and raises your body to life to live with him forever. So this brings us back to Rally Day. Today we are beginning a new Sunday school year we started a new year for the ECC this past week. Soon confirmation class will begin after Labor Day. Our focus is on the children of the congregation so that we can teach them the sacred ABC, so that we can teach them the Christian faith, namely that Jesus, the very Son of God, came to this world to bear our sins. He suffered and died on the cross, paying for the guilt of our sin, and he rose again on the third day so that we can have forgiveness and life everlasting. The faith that is taught to these children is the very same faith that was taught to us as children or maybe later in our life when we came to faith. You see, a Christian never outgrows the sacred ABCs. A Christian never outgrows the very basics of the faith. It is in these basics that God breathes life into us. Even Pastor Timothy never outgrew what his mother and grandmother taught him about the Christian faith. And we as parents and grandparents, family members and congregation members, are given the privilege to share the sacred ABCs, to share the Holy Scriptures with the children in our congregation and with our community. We have the privilege of sharing God's Word with each other as we encourage one another during these last days. So return to the sacred ABCs. Go back to the basics. Receive the breath of God, for God's breath shall give you life. Go in peace. Amen. At this time, I'd like to ask the uh, Sunday school teachers and the ECC teachers to please come forward. And you can just line up here. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you are to be installed as teachers at St. Paul's Lutheran Church and ECC, a work in which our Father in heaven has great joy. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. Beloved in the Lord, you are to assist me, the minister of the word and sacrament, in the instruction of God's people according to his holy word. You are to prepare yourselves for this work by your individual and corporate study of the word of God and the faith drawn from it as has been delivered to us in the small catechism. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation, it is especially important that you show yourselves by word and example to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the position and trust it to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and confirming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. I do. 
Beloved in the Lord, you have heard the promises of the faithful spoken by these men and women. Do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God has given you, so that he may be glorified and his work be done in our midst? If so, then answer, we do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I install you as teachers at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in ECC in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty and merciful God, enliven and strengthen you in your service, that you may be good and faithful leaders and teachers to the glory of his name and the salvation of his people. Amen. Go in the name of the Lord, be steadfast and movable always, abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. And would you just please turn around for everyone to see you. All right, thank you. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, grant us repentant faith to strive to enter more deeply into your blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation. By the witness of your saints, gather many from the very corners of this world to enter your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have called fathers to bring up their children in your fear and love. Sanctify and sustain them through your word, that they would lovingly discipline their children and show forth your own divine care for your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, grant wisdom, integrity, and skill to our president, the Congress of the United States, our governor, and all those in authority, that exercise of their lawful duties, justice would be maintained, the innocent defended, wickedness restrained, liberty upheld, and consciences respected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you chasten those whom you love. Teach your fatherly, fatherly love to those enduring the afflictions of this life for all things to come from your hand. Guard Marianne, Johnny, Louis, Kathy, and Deb, and all who suffer in body and soul, and bring them through their trials. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your holy presence, we recline at your table and receive the blood of your Son, which speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Let this blood of Christ thoroughly bless the earth of the created bodies and sanctify us completely to become a new holy land for his eternal dwelling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we give you thanks for all the saints who have gone before us. Grant that we would die to ourselves and enter with Christ into the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem to join with all the angels in festal gathering, and be numbered with the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, perfected in the righteousness of Christ, and abiding forever in his new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To you, O Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all glory, honor, worship, and praise, now and ever to the end of all the ages. Amen. You may be seated as we collect our gifts and offerings.
please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the life of the land. Stand in peace. Amen. Amen. Take drink of true blood of Jesus Christ, give it from the show of all your sins. Your sins have been forgiven. Go forth and sin no more.
welcome to the table. Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Be part of peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Be part in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord.
Christ bless and keep you in the baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
please rise for the Nunc Dimittis. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn, 851, Lord of Glory, You Have Bought Us.
Oh,